Okay, on your screen, you should see um, a orange uh, What's New with CleveNet eMedia. Um, this is a little bit difficult for me because I can't see what you're seeing. Um, but if you would, <clears throat> if you can see the, uh, the slideshow, the presentation, go ahead. I know some of you already have your hands raised. But if you can just use your icon up in the top left-hand corner and choose OK or agree with the thumbs up just so that I know that you can hear me and that you are seeing what I'm seeing. Like so. Okay, we have a couple that can see the presentation. If you can't hear me, well obviously I'm typing this in the chat, but if you can't hear me, um, please type in the chat box at the bottom uh, right hand corner of your screen. I just want to make sure that everyone can hear and that we're all seeing the same thing. I don't know. Kathy, Marsha, Sue, if you can hear me and if you can see, oh, thanks, Sue. <laughs> I saw one thumbs up. Um, if you can just use the icon in the top left-hand corner, there should be like a hand raised. If you click the drop-down menu, you can choose. There are different um, icons. Just click the thumbs up so that I know you're seeing what, what I'm seeing and that you can hear me. If you can't, um, please just type in the chat box. Okay, great. Okay. So this webinar, we're going to go over some new things, some new things in OverDrive as far as format and um, some additions to the web app and some other good things, some changes with uh, Zinio magazines. And um, I'm going to give you just a heads up on something that's coming soon to CleveNet, which is Hoopla. So to get started, um, now this isn't, this isn't, uh, this is not a relatively new update, but um, I don't know how our staff keep up with um, OverDrive and some of the updates that they have. They, they frequently update their blog with news and updates and things like that. But um, I'm not sure if, if any of your libraries do training. And if you, if you know about this already, awesome. If you don't, this will be a great surprise for you. Um, as of September of last year, <clears throat> the uh, update to the web app is that they have taken away the um, Adobe authorization step. So new users, when they download the app, instead of having to authorize with an Adobe ID, they'll be able to either um, create an OverDrive account using Facebook or just creating an OverDrive account on their own. And it'll be much, much easier. I know a lot of us struggle with um, patrons you know, they can't remember their username or password, they have to create another Adobe ID, and then if the Adobe ID email and the OverDrive don't match, then, you know, then it doesn't sync. Um, this will be much, much easier for them. I did actually try this with one of the library's Kindles, um, and for some reason it still wanted me in the settings. It still was asking for the Adobe authorization, but when I did it with my iPhone, I was pleasantly surprised that it didn't ask for that. So, um, and according to the, their blog and their instructions, um, Android devices shouldn't require it either. So um, just a heads up about that. The next thing I, um, I just 
stumbled upon this um, because I check out a lot of ebooks. And before, when you would check out an ebook or you put you put yourself on hold for an ebook, you would get an email telling you you have three days to check this out. Um, you know, if you don't check it out, it's going to go to the next person. You know, I'd usually forget or um, something like that. So um, I was surprised that when I got an email for something I was on hold for, and I went into my, you know, I went, went, you know, I just opened up the app, went to my holds, and there was nothing there. And I thought, oh no, um, it disappeared. But actually, the new feature that they have right now is that. Um, Patrons are put on an auto, an auto borrowing. So when they place a hold on um, an item in OverDrive, they will be it'll automatically check out to them, and they will get an email telling them that the item is now in their account. I think this is it's it's difficult for me to say whether or not this is good or not. I mean, I think it's great because, you know, all of us, you know, three days isn't a very long time to check something out. On the other hand, if they check it out, you know, then, and they don't realize it for five days, you know, they're a week into their um, borrowing period. I do think, however, that it will be great for circulation because we don't get those counts, all those holds. We don't get counts for holds. We only get counts for, for checkouts. So everything be on, being on auto checkout, is going to be awesome because our CERC will go up. Um, the downside to that is that if it automatically checks out to someone and there's another person, you know, you have 20 people on the waiting list and they don't even read it, it's and they don't return it, they don't even know it's there. Um, then the next person won't still won't get it for the, a few weeks. So I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to go to my account. being a little bit slow. Okay, so I'm going to go to my hold shelf and you'll see that I have a few things on hold. And you'll see right here it says auto checkout is on. It's automatically turned on. They just, that's the way they set it. You can um, click on auto check on your options and you can turn it off. Um, so are you sure you want to check turn off auto check for race cars? Yes. It's thinking about it. <laughs> okay, so now it's turned off. So basically what will happen is I will just get the notification that it's available and if I want to borrow it, I have to go into my hold shelf. So that's just something new to, um, to note. So if a patron comes up and says, I put something on hold and I got an email and I went to my hold shelf and it wasn't there, um, tell them to check their um, to check their bookshelf um, because it's probably there. Okay, moving on to the next update is OverDrive's narrated eBooks. Um, this happened late last year as well. Um, basically, these are um, only for OverDrive Read. Um, the only type that we have currently are children's titles. Um, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Um, my kids love Tumble Books, which is um, animated, narrated ebooks. And um, I've been waiting for Overdrive to come out with something that, you know, um, you know, you have audiobooks, which there's no pictures, and then you have ebooks, which there's no narration, animation, or sound. Um, so I think this is a great, uh, a great step. Um, the thing to remember with their narrated ebooks is that they're only for OverDrive Read. Um, it doesn't work in um, some formats, um, which I'll show you where they are. So when you go to, um, we have them. There's no way to search for them either. Um, there's there's no format type that you can um, you can do an advanced search for. However. We have built out a collection. So under collections on the kids eMedia page, there's this list that's narrated eBooks for kids. Um, there's about there's a little over a hundred titles. I'm going to show you an example. Um, borrow. I wanted to show you something first. 
Okay, so available formats. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry. There was a place where you could go and it would tell you which formats. Um, Oh, here we go. So when you when you're looking at a book, um, you can say it says available formats, Overdrive Read, PDF, eBook. On a Kindle, it has device restrictions. So if you click that, it'll tell you it's not supported on these devices. Doesn't mean you can't read it. You just won't. I don't think you'll be able to hear it. Um, so even though you can listen to it, it works great on an iPad, but it does not work on an iPhone. So basically, any any browser that you use with Overdrive Read, except for these um, these ones right here. So you just click Read in your browser, and it will load up like so. Click Start Reading this book, and then down here at the bottom, you'll see this little button that says Start Narration. I'm just going to click that. Promise of a Promise by Robert Munch and Michael Kuzmigat, read by Robert Munch. This is an Andrew Craig production. www.andrewcraig.me On the very first nice day of spring, Alasha was said, I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to go fishing in the ocean. And then down here, if you want to pause it, just click pause. And obviously, you can adjust the volume on your device um, for as you know soft or loud as you would like it. Um, it's it's pretty. It's I've like I say last night. I think my son and I checked out about five of these and read them before bedtime. And it was just it was really nice to be able to do it. There was only one that was a little glitchy and it kept repeating some of the words every now and again. Um, but for the most part, it, it seems to work really well. Um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to type into the chat uh, down at the bottom. I mean, we'll, we can, I can take lots of questions at the end of the presentation, but if you have anything specific as far as OverDrive Read or any of the OverDrive stuff, just go ahead and type it in the bottom. Um, and it says currently the best browsers for OverDrive Read are Chrome, Safari, and Internet Explorer 11. Okay, the next update to OverDrive is Nook Periodicals. Um, CPL purchased uh, Nook Periodicals about mid-December. Um, <clears throat> so it's been interesting to learn more about, about this um, that they're offering. Um, a few things to note is that you will need the Nook app. You cannot read, because um, a lot of people are comparing this to Zinio, and you can't read these magazines in your browser. Um, so this could be um, difficult for people with a Kindle, because even though um, a Kindle is an Android operating system, um, Amazon and Barnes & Noble are competitors. So Amazon does not have the Nook app in their marketplace. Um, so if you, when you're going to install apps on your Kindle, if you went to apps and then the store and searched for Nook, you wouldn't find it. Um, I did test this on one of the library's Kindle Fires to see if I could sideload the Nook app. And I was able to after quite a bit of trial and error. Um, I can send out instructions for this. Basic, there are, all you have to do is um, make sure that on the Kindle Fire that you go into the application or device settings and allow third-party apps. That's the first step. And then go to um, GetJar. Uh, it's G-E-T-J-A-R. And search for the Nook app and then click Download. Um, and then you'll be able to install it on your uh, Kindle. But for you know, for beginner users for Kindle, it's probably not going to be the easiest thing to do. But it is you are able to do it. Um, the second thing to note 
is that there are no back issues. And what I mean by this is that when you go into um, overdrive and you're looking at the issues, a major difference between Zinio and Nook is that um, Zinio has back issues for um, all the magazines and those are set by either when Zinio pr um, purchased the rights to the magazine or when the library began their subscription. Um, in OverDrive, there are no back issues listed. So you can go in and check out a magazine, come back in the next month and check out the next issue, and you, will, you can create your own back issues by checking out the magazines, but there's not going to be this long list um, that you can check out multiple issues. Um, one of the nice features, the one thing that I really, really like about Nook periodicals is that you only have to authenticate once with Barnes & Noble. So where Zinio, Zinio, you have to go in and um, you basically sign in twice. You log in on the library's website and then you log in on the Zinio, um, through the Zinio app or the Zinio website. Um, all you have to do, you only have to do that once um, with no periodicals. Um, and I'll show you a, a short tutorial of um, how that works. And I'm really happy that OverDrive um, Technical Services, uh, Tish had them put the, the, the magazines um, on the home page. So when we go back to our main collection, you notice um, before they were sort of hidden. Um, but now that we, you know, we're starting to learn about this and they worked out some of the bugs, um, you have new magazines that are listed right here. So they're right on the top. They're very visible. They're not here on this uh, orange menu, um, but they are very easily accessible. You can also use advanced search and go into formats and choose Nook periodicals and then do a search and that will show you all of the magazines. Can, can everyone see if you can just, um, if you can raise your hand so it, tell me if you can see, if you're looking at the ClevesNet uh, OverDrive website with all of the magazines. I just, I'm flipping back and forth between these two websites uh, and I just want to make sure that as I'm flipping back and forth you can see what I'm seeing. Great. So this is what it looks like when you first um, view the Nook Periodicals page. Um, one of the things, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, there are limits. So the first limit to know is that there is a five issue checkout limit for magazines. But this is but not, not really, because what happens is when you check out a magazine, you click you get this issue, I'll do that now, and then you click send to Nook periodicals, and obviously it's not going to work on my computer because um, I don't have the Nook, you know, I can't have a Nook app on my computer. It will, um, it will go away off of your bookshelf. So as long as you keep sending everything to your Nook and it, and it goes off of your OverDrive bookshelf, you can keep checking out more and more issues. Um, but what will happen is that there, if a patron or if you're in here and you're ch you start um, checking out all these magazines, once you hit six, it's going to tell you that you've reached your limit. So in, over here you can see my account, the periodical checkout limit is five. But once I send the magazine to my Nook, it's off of my OverDrive bookshelf and I can check out more. Um, the other limit to know about is the issue limit. Um, you can see this by clicking list. Each magazine will tell you how many copies are available per issue. Um, every magazine you know, it's set per magazine. So, um, you know, Air and Space, we have 200 per issue, and we can see how many have been checked out so far. Um, Allure, we have 500. And Amazing Wellness, it's always available. So you're never going to have to worry about um, running out of, of uh, issues. Um, if Zinio is any indication of um, we have subscription limits on Zinio as well, um, pretty much the same type of thing, and we've never had to worry about people being turned away. That has never happened yet. We've never checked out every issue. You know, we've never run out of licenses for a magazine issue um, because it's 
per and it's not per year or per month. It's well, it is per month if it's a monthly magazine, but it's just per issue. See if I can think of anything else about. I think that pretty much covers everything about Nook periodicals. Okay, moving on. Um, Zinio, moving right in from one periodical to the next. Uh, the Zinio, we have we have some cancellations. Um, we we've renewed most of our magazines, and we have a few additions. <clears throat> I have these located on the CLEVNET member site. Um, right at the top you have digital magazines available for 2015. Um, well, actually I did want to show you, I'm sorry, I apologize. I wanted to show you the video for Nook Periodicals. It's a short two minute video, we'll just run through this real quick. In this video, you'll learn how to get free periodicals from your digital library. Periodicals from your digital library come in the Nook Periodicals format. To get Nook Periodicals, you'll need access to your library's Overdrive web. Oops. Right, which you can find on Overdrive.com or through the Overdrive app. You'll also need your library card or student ID and the free Nook Reading app for a supported Nook device. Visit your library's Overdrive website and sign in with your library card or student ID. You can search for a specific periodical or use the advanced search to find all titles in the Nook Periodicals format. Once you find an available periodical, hover over or tap the jacket and select either Get This Issue to get a copy in one click or select More to visit the title Details page for more information. The Details page will tell you valuable information about the periodical like how many copies of the issue are still available, and which Nook devices and apps are supported. After you select Get This Issue, the periodical will appear on your library bookshelf. From here, select Send to Nook to send the periodical from your library bookshelf to your Nook device or app where you'll be able to read it. If you're getting a Nook periodical from your library for the first time, you'll be taken to a Barnes & Noble page where you'll be asked to sign in with or create a free Nook account. After you sign in or create an account, select the Grant Access button. This is a one-time step that will allow periodicals to be sent from your library account to your Nook device or app. Once a Nook periodical has been successfully sent to Nook, it will automatically be cleared from your library account. This frees up space in your library account so you can get other periodicals. After you successfully sent your periodical to Nook, switch over to your Nook device or Nook app. The periodical will appear in your Nook library. Simply tap on the periodical to begin reading. Nook periodicals from your library will stay in your Nook account until you delete them. You don't have to worry about returning them to your library. And well, one thing to mention, the one thing that they kind of skipped over is that if it's the first time that you are um, checking out a Nook magazine, and you download the Nook app, you're going to have to, if you don't have a Barnes & Noble account, or um, you'll have to create one. And if you do, you can sign in, but make sure that the emails are the same. Um, and it'll ask you just to do that once. And then from there, you won't have to do that ever again, which is great. Okay, so let me go back. Okay, so on the member site, we have titles listed in this spreadsheet. I'm going to open this up. Make sure that I'm sharing this with you so you can see it. Um, can all of you see the Excel spreadsheet that I have up on my screen? Um, just go ahead and do the thumbs up if you can see that, and thumbs down if you can't. It doesn't look like it's allowing me to share it with you. Thumbs down. Okay. Um, let's try and sharing. Ah, there it is. Okay. Now I'll try it. Okay. 
Now do you see the Excel spreadsheet? Just do a thumbs up so I can make sure that you're seeing what I'm seeing. Okay, great. Okay, so this spreadsheet is available on the ClevNet member site. It's a list of titles of all the magazines that we have in both OverDrive and Zinio. Um, a lot of magazines are in one or the other, although we do have some duplicates. That, um, some magazines in Zinio were um, newly offered for this year. Um, these are highlighted, Bon Appetit, Brides, GQ, MacLife, Parents Magazine, Self, Vanity Fair, Vogue, and Wired. Okay, so those are new magazines. Those tend to be offered in both Overdrive and Vimeo. Um, so um, just, you know, we felt like it was okay to duplicate some of the more popular magazines. I mean, especially, you know, if, if someone has a Kindle, they're already used to downloading Vimeo magazines. They might not want to have to download another, you know, another app to read a different kind of magazines, but it really depends on what you're um, looking at uh, downloading. The other thing that I found to be kind of handy, especially for Nook, is to know how often the issues come up, especially because they don't have the back issues. So it's nice to know, you know, how often you should go in and check to see if there's a new issue. Um, one of them that I wanted to point out that is available in OverDrive is um, USA Today. Um, those, you know, there are 260 issues. So if you want the latest one, you know, you have to go in there very often and, and download those. Um, so again, this is a really handy list um, to know. Now as far as cancellations go, um, here um, we've gotten, we've, some of these magazines were not canceled. They are no longer available. They're no longer in a publication. Um, some of them were duplicated in, in uh, OverDrive. A Nook periodicals, so we decided, you know, it wasn't popular enough to have it in both places, um, or it was a very expensive, um, we couldn't afford to keep it, um, or it was just, it was not a high surfing magazine and we wanted to put the money towards something more popular. Um, so here's just a list, uh, American Spectator, Architectural Record, um, several of them are um, Spanish publications, <clears throat> um, and like Martha Stewart Weddings, we have brides instead. So um, this is a good reference for you if someone's asking, well, why, you know, why isn't the magazine in there? You know, you can explain to them that it's, you know, it's either not in publication or it, it might be in overdrive, um, and you can see that up here. I'm sharing. I'm gonna go back to the. Okay, and the new magazine should take effect. Um, they should be available um, sometime beginning mid-February. Um, so if you go in there today, um, some like Brian GQ will not be available in Zinio, but they they are in Nook Periodical currently. And lastly, um, Hoopla will be coming hopefully sometime in the spring. Um, the CleanNet Online Resource Committee decided to go ahead and purchase it for the consortium. Um, we do not currently have a, a launch date. We will be offering training um, prior to the launch. And for those of you, if you're not familiar with Hoopla, Hoopla is audiobooks, movies, music albums, and television shows. Um, so the content, aside from audiobooks, the content is different than what we have in Overdrive. Um, there is a 10-item CERC per patron per month. Um, this is set simply because um, we pay per circulation. So um, we put down a deposit, and then for every item that we CERC, we pay. And the average, I think, is about $1.99 per CERC. Um, every, um, all of the checkout limits are different depending on what, um, what item type. So audiobooks, it's three weeks. Movies, I think it's a week. Music albums is also a week. Television shows, I have to double check. Um, but it will tell them how many, when they first log into their Hoopla account, how many checkouts they have left for the month, um, and what the uh, checkout is per item. 
um, and again, training opportunities will be available and they'll be provided by the vendor um, as soon as we know when, when we're going to be going live with Hoopla. And that is, that is pretty much sums up all of the updates. Um, feel free down in the bottom right hand corner um, if you have any questions. I know we had a lot of questions the first session that I did this webinar. Um, so if you have questions, please use the chat in the bottom right hand corner um, and I will answer any of the questions that you have. I don't know if anyone has any questions. So if you if you don't have any questions, um, feel free to sign off. Um, and like I said, I will send um, a link to the video um, of this webinar just in case you want to share it with um, coworkers or staff. And it, I will also um, post this to the CleanNet member site as well. Thank mm -hmm. you.